Let's move on now to some other world news on the programme. And voting has begun today in India's most popular state, Uttar Pradesh. For the last half decade, it's been ruled by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's party, the BJP. And success in these local elections would give the party a significant boost for the national elections, which are to be held in 2024. But the outcome of this vote won't be known soon because Uttar Pradesh has a population that's nearly the size of Brazil's. And so voting is being staggered over seven stages. Ballot counting won't begin until early next month. To discuss, though, our uh, chief foreign affairs editor, Douglas Herbert, is with me in the studio. And, Doug, India is preparing for elections in five different states, but none of them are, are attracting the attention that this one is in Uttar Pradesh. So why does this one matter so much? Yeah, all roads, uh, as far as the, the media's attention, the world's attention, lead to this one state in northern India. Look, you said at the top... Uh, Uttar Pradesh is not just the most populous state. It has upwards over 200 million, some say 230 million people. It also happens to be one of India's most impoverished states. So a lot of all those social economic ills that are generalized across India and a lot of states are really concentrated in this one area. But perhaps more significantly for our purposes and for this election, this uh, state has been seen as a laboratory, so to speak, for the Hindu nationalist ideology uh, put forward and promoted by Narendra Modi's BJP party. Um, and the governor of Uttar Pradesh state, he, he won big five years ago. Uh, and since then, he has been, uh, his critics have really uh, accused him of not just trying to implement hardline Hindu policies, uh, but to do so in a way that has really stigmatized uh, the Muslim population, which is about 20% of the population in this state, um, and has also marginalized them at the same time. He famously uh, applauded Donald Trump's uh, Muslim ban. You might remember that early in Trump's administration, uh, banning uh, people from Muslim-majority countries coming into the U.S. He thought that was a good idea. Um, what are his biggest challenges, though, as the governor faces re-election? Staying in power. Um, look, he does obviously have the numbers on his side. The question is he needs a really decisive victory in order to, as you suggested uh, in your introduction, in order to really pave the way for Narendra Modi in those 2024 national elections to sort of reclaim the seat of, of prime minister and to have sort of a, a, a real, a lot of impetus in his campaign. Uh, the problems are, I mean, where do you start? When I said impoverished state, uh, you know, that's an understatement. Uh, this is a place where you have for one sort of low-level government sort of clerk job, a uh, civil servant. You have millions of people applying for jobs. It's it, young people who are desperate to get jobs. Millions of people applying for sometimes uh, a job that has a thousand openings. Uh, you can do the maths there and calculate what the odds are of getting a job. Uh, you have unemployment really high. You have per capita income and growth in this state. Growth keeps falling in the state, whereas elsewhere in India and many states, it's been rising. Uh, but the pandemic is really what has sideswiped uh, the governor of this state, who, like I said, he's a hardline Hindu monk turned politician. Uh, he is right now basically trying to give handouts in this election uh, in order to sort of assuage the economic hardship of a lot of the population, especially the lower caste. But a lot of his critics say uh, that is no substitute for the sectarian, divisive, hardline rhetoric that he's been spreading, uh, really at the expense of not just religious minorities in general, but specifically the Muslim population. I'll just note that one of his slogans was this is the 80 percent versus 20 percent election, 80 percent being the rough population of Hindus in Uttar Pradesh, 20% being roughly the population of Muslims, although he says he was referring to mafia and terrorists. And if he does win again when the ballots are finally counted next month, um, what should you expect for Uttar Pradesh? Will anything change for his second term? More of the same of his policies, but perhaps even with more braggadocio, more bluster. What do I mean by that? He has, uh, when I said he targeted, he's targeted Muslims and he has stigmatized the Muslim minority and other religious minorities. Um, he's had basically very stringent laws outlawing, mi uh, outlawing mixed marriages, mixed in the religious sense marriages. Uh, he's made it very hard for for farmers as well. He passed a very controversial, in, in that state, some controversial laws uh, which were part and parcel of a much broader movement uh, in the area. Uh, farmers last year, remember, there were year-long protests by farmers, and that could be quite a coalition to deal with. But if he does win, you, I see him continuing these policies and continuing them emboldened uh, and perhaps also encouraging the Hindu majority in, in the state, as he's hinted in the past, to take justice into their own hands when they feel a wrong has been done unto them. So a climate of fear and a climate of real persecution if you happen to be a religious minority there. And of course, he'll have his eye on uh, his boss's seat, 
Narendra Modi, perhaps even in 2024. Who knows? Douglas Herbert, thanks very much.